Hey yo, what's good you guys? It's Boomer and Jared watching Bali Star and today we just getting into should we colonize Venus instead of Mars? Um honestly I'm not so sure. Yeah, I mean pretty sure we saw uh an update as I will call it. They said that like uh they wanted people for uh the colonization of mars you know what i'm saying to go live on mars i think this came out like a couple of years ago i remember my friend my homie he said he was gonna do it i was like all right bro live your life <laughs> because you know what i'm saying like hey man y'all do that if y'all want but since they colonized venus i don't know man i don't really know what's going on with all these other planets but let's find out which one might be more habitable let's find out let's go habitual i think they call it there's a lot of talk about sending humans to mars but no one talks about venus why not and could venus actually be the better option for a human colony going to mars has been a fixture in our collective cultural consciousness for a very long time it's inspired more sci-fi movies and stories than I can count, a ride at Disney World, and a Twitter following for the Mars rover that's almost 2 million strong. Meanwhile, Venus has inspired... what? Two Ray Bradbury stories, a plant that eats flies, and a razor? I've always been curious to that. Basically, Venus Why has base the a worst lot public of relations team in the solar system. And that hurts our sister planet not just, just in culture Mars. and media, but in space policy. Presidents Bush and Obama and the Chinese government have all outlined goals for manned missions to Mars. The Dutch nonprofit group Mars One even held an international competition to find volunteers for a one-way mission to the Martian surface. But Venus? No manned mission love at all. Which is odd, since in most respects Venus is actually an easier and less costly colonization target than Mars is. For starters, Venus is closer to Earth. That's I'm like, wouldn't it be hotter though, since it's like closer to the sun? Why we sent probes to Venus long before we sent them to Mars, and why we sent more of them. Depending on the launch window, the round trip can be 30 to 50% shorter, which is a major factor for manned missions. Shorter trips means less weightlessness and radiation, less food and water to carry, and thus less fuel and lower cost. This would also be a huge advantage in moving the people and equipment necessary to actually colonize another world. Because bear in mind, there's no Craigslist in space. If we ever start a colony, we'll need to bring along almost everything. And it's not just the shorter trip. The planet itself has some significant advantages over Mars. It's closer to the sun, which means about four times more available solar power than you have on Mars. It also has a thick atmosphere, unlike that wispy layer on Mars. That means better protection from space radiation and meteorites for our enterprising colonizers and their future cities. It also means more available carbon dioxide, from which, in principle, you might extract oxygen. But the real kicker is gravity. Venus has about 0.9 Earth G, it's pretty close, while Mars has less than 0.4. And one thing we do know is that prolonged low gravity is bad for humans. How bad? In Earth orbit, astronauts lose bone mass at about 10 times the rate of someone with advanced osteoporosis. Now, no one knows exactly how bad Martian gravity would be for humans, but it's definitely not going to be good. On Venus, that's far less of a concern. And remember, we're talking about long-term colonization, not just visits. Even if we had the technological means to add water to a planet's surface and oxygen to its air, changing a planet's surface gravity is currently not even within the realm of discussion. So terraforming seems silly if people couldn't live there more than a few months without their bones falling apart. A theoretical Venusian colony thus seems to have a lot going for it. So why then this tunnel vision for Mars? Surfacism. Okay, I just made that word up, but hear me out. Ever since the days of seafaring exploration, we've had an obsession with landing on the surface of things. If you don't plant a flag on something, it's almost I mean, colonizing. like colonizing there doesn't count. So yeah. what's all this have to do That's with Venus, which the title actually of the video has too. a solid surface? Well, it does, but humans can't land on it. See, there's a teensy problem with temperature. There's so much CO2 on Venus that the greenhouse effect makes the surface hotter than hell. Over 450 degrees Celsius, well above the melting point of lead. But the bigger problem is the barometric pressure on the surface. It's over 90 Earth atmospheres. That means that landing on the Venusian surface would be like diving one kilometer underwater on Earth, far beyond the crush depth of most military submarines. In what? fact, most probes that NASA and the Soviets sent to the surface of Venus imploded in midair. We learned our lesson, and a few reinforced probes did manage to touch down and send images of the Venusian surface, but even those only lasted about two hours before, you know. The point is, 
I think surfacism is a real bias, and the fact that we can't live on the Venusian surface could help explain why Mars gets all the hype. But maybe that's sensible. I mean, if the surface will kill us, there's no point in going there, right? So it's like, what about Mercury? See, around 50 kilometers or 30 miles. I know not Jupiter or Saturn, maybe Neptune or Uranus, because those are mostly gaseous planets, and they might not have a surface, you know? So, Above that's just going off surface. basic so common knowledge. Things happen. First, oh, the temperature what I learned drops in school. to only about 70 degrees Celsius. That's still and watch super stuff like hot. This. But firefighting equipment on Earth can withstand proximity to forest fires with temperatures that reach over 2,000 degrees Celsius. The pressure at that altitude also drops to almost exactly one Earth atmosphere. That means humans would need heat-resistant clothing and oxygen masks, but not spacesuits to walk around in that environment. Granted, there's the minor nuisance of sulfuric acid floating around in the Venusian air, but that's potentially manageable. And at that altitude, the atmosphere is still dense enough for lots of stuff to float, like balloons filled with helium, or maybe filled even with just regular Earth air. Throw in the favorable gravity, and it starts to look like the upper atmosphere of Venus might be the closest thing in the solar system to an Earth-like environment. So, it might make sense to colonize Venus with... Cloud cities. I am not making this up. NASA's Systems Analysis and Concept Directorate has unveiled a conceptual blueprint for this scheme. They call it the High Altitude Venus Operational Concept, or HAVOC. Interesting branding choice, but still super awesome. We've linked the NASA videos in the description. You should check them out. Now, for the record, this is Don't all conceptual. Don't trip. Very far from sending this guy to lead our Venusian Cloud City, but NASA is taking the idea seriously. Right now, most of the chatter is still about using Venus as practice for colonies elsewhere, like Mars. So we haven't overcome surfacism just yet. But this might change. The gravity issue alone might make Venus... Besides, like, what if, like, unless, like, they have, like, the cities would uh, have orbs that would, like, float off of the surface of Venus or so. If, but, because if they touch down on Venus, like, what if they eventually, like, you know... You know what I'm saying? And it caused the cities to fall and hit the surface of Venus and also, you know what I'm saying? It's like, how would all that even work out? The go-to option for long-term human habitation. Note, centuries from now, if we learn how to sequester enough carbon out of its atmosphere, we might even be able to plant a flag or two. So what do you guys think? Is Venus a better colonization option than Mars? Put your two cents in the comments. Or even better, tweet them. Hashtag Occupy Venus. If we start a grassroots movement, I'll let you know on the next episode of Space Time. Very interesting. All right, you guys, so that was Should We Colonize Venus Instead of Mars by PBS Space Time. You feel me? Um, honestly, I have no idea. I never gave thought. Even, like, when they been saw, when they been said that, you know, colonize Mars, colonize Mars, I was like, bro, like, all that went right right over my head you know what i'm saying it's like bro ain't no i don't know man it's like i guess people's thoughts go on that some people's thoughts don't go on that i'm one of those this is like i don't know i don't know you feel me but maybe y'all thoughts are like that y'all let me know um is would be would venus be a better option Especially all that I said during the video is like, you know, how could I eventually go about? And if it could, like, you know what I'm saying, with um, human interference, you know what I'm saying, we made it li uh, livable. It's like when we disrupt Venus's, like, you know, way of, like, uh, you know what I'm saying, just destroy the way Venus is and, and, I don't know, cause it to, like, you know probably expo explode or to probably get shifted out of orbit uh, i don't know exactly or mars you know what i'm saying like where it could possibly be the same way as well y'all let me know down in the comment section down below may y'all know it's boomer and you're watching bali star make sure to leave a like to support the video if you enjoy it subscribe if you're new so that we join up with the all star gang up in this thing i'm gonna catch y'all in the next one 100 oh Yeah, yeah.